photographers are like ambulances. When you hear their clicky motions, you get out of the way. It's actually a law. They annoy you with their sounds and they take your loved ones on trips, short trips. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna help them. If 10 of them come to me, I'll help you. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I'm still here. Still here in the crowded room of junk. It's my new studio. It's an improvement over what you're used to. So be real with yourself. We're in Olympus. Regular color instead of flat. I just did a natural. Look at us. I don't get why people buy these expensive heavy cameras and lenses. Check out iPhone footage and be honest. Listen, be honest with your mother. You've disappointed her thus far. Are you planning on making it up to her? Yeah, look into it. The footage is on par and better than all footage here. I'm not gonna argue. I don't know what video you're commenting on, but I'm in a professional studio now, and this has surpassed whatever the iPhone could put out. You know that. Admit it down below. Far too much emphasis on frame rates. There's never enough emphasis on the fastest and slowest frame rates possible. 960 frames, you ain't gonna get me to shut up about it. Eight out of 10 bit skin tone comparison who really cares about skin tones if the content is good i'm with you i'm with you you're selling me here it's so true like i have a review coming i can't use it yet but i found my fiance's mother's old point and shoot olympus camera and it does the worst footage possible but i'm going to review it and it's going to be a fun video as long as the audio is good which this isn't terrible preamps, but I'll do external audio and we'll have a good time. So it's like, you're right. But then there comes a point where you're just like, I want the image to look better. You get sucked in a trap and it is a trap. Avoid it if possible. Do your whole show on an iPhone 7 and be done with it. You could. Weird so many people pull the trigger on this expensive gear and leave it gathering dust in a drawer while the obsess about buying another camera with the newest specs. It's a total trap, a useless trap that you should not fall into. I do it because I'm a camera channel. I can get away with this. I can get a bunch of gear, review it, make money on it, bring joy to your bullshit life, and then we're good. But if I was just like a normal person, I have a hobby as a photographer, I wouldn't be obsessing. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. But there is a certain level of dignity that you should pass one day, and it is smartphone level. Until they come out with natural looking footage, I just, some of us prefer the real world, and we're not ready for AI to take over everything. We're still in the matrix. We're the ones that are in the real life. We've been unplugged. Life is shit. The skies are gray, but it's okay. It's real. I don't want fake everything instead of a beautiful window overlooking a landscape you have like a point a painting you've seen those i said pointing i'll leave hey love your vids one question would you buy a zv1 in 2022 i wouldn't buy it in 1901 it was underwhelming back then when it was bundled with a horse you get a horse with it for vlogging and sit down shooting or a zve10 I gotta tell you, I would go ZV-1 just for the 960 frames. It's a clunky system, I hate it. You have to like press to lock the focus and exposure. It's, phones are so much better at it, but at least it has it in a one inch sensor. Super crop, no longer one inch, smaller than my Huawei. It's terrible. The answer is Huawei P40 Pro, you know it. CBE 10 is not bad, especially now that they have vlogging lenses, 11mm 1.8, although that active stabe crop, like why is it 45%? Because there's no stabe to work with. The A7S 3 has IBIS, and then so just an additional 10% crop gets you pretty smooth. But ZV foregoes everything, and then it's like 45% at least. That sucks. This guy went on to write me seven books that I will not read. 
But if we're getting the gist of it, he wants a nice wildlife cam. He has a Canon RP and an 800 mil Tony 11. And he's thinking of upgrading, wants to stay full frame. But he's like, this ain't really working. There's nothing that exists. And you would be right. If we take a look at the Canon Cripple Hammer chart, this is the Canon Cripple Hammer way of life. They don't release a product that you want. They release several that have pieces of what you want. So like, what would you upgrade to? The EOS R, you still get no slow-mo really. That's not really much of an upgrade. R6, oh you think, okay, cool, 4K 60p, let's go. Oh no, custom modes. Oh no, the color is different than what I'm used to. What, what happened to that? Oh my God, there's no aperture priority. Oh, what is that? Okay, I'll get the R5. Wow, that's expensive. How come these files are so hard to edit though? Oh, what happened there? Overheat, ow, that's hot. Apparently the overheating is no longer a thing. Canon debunked them all themselves. That's weird. Weird that they can do that. R5C, no battery life. C70, like you're, there's no answer for you. R6 would be it, but you have to know that if you want to switch from 4K 60 to 1080p 120, which you should be doing back and forth, boom, boom, boom. There's no easy way to do it. So you're stuck 4K 60 the whole day or 120 the whole day. If you do that, but still no aperture priority, how are you gonna expose anything? You can't. Are you more disappointed with the OM-1 or the X-H2S? Both seem to have minor upgrades over their predecessors, if not downgrades. That is a problem. I'm more disappointed with the X-H2S 240 frames per second. More disappointed than anything I can remember in the past 10 years in life in general. I can't believe how noisy it and how bad the noise looks. That hurts, but it's still the better camera than the OM-1. But if you're looking at like, what's the better upgrade from their predecessor? I don't know, the OM-1's mostly just improvements. Better frame rates, more of them, better autofocus, except when I tested it, it was losing my ass. Whereas this one almost never does. Sometimes it actually really does a lot, but whatever, that's a, not a problem. I think the X-H2S, I'm still, like, I still have it. In fact, Pergear just reached out to me saying they have CF Express Type B cards that are like 512 gigs. So I was like, and she was saying that, oh, we also do the Viltrox lenses. So I've asked her if she can really give me that Viltrox 13 mil test it again on the X-H2S and also the 23mm 1.4. I'm doubting she's gonna do it, but that's the one I asked for originally and she never gave it to me. It was the 33 and the 56. I was like, how about the 23? He's like, sorry, we don't have any. Maybe she has some now. What would you recommend for a vlogging camera under $1,000? Well, thanks for keeping up with the show where I've never mentioned that before. Never mentioned any of that. Sony X3000, your number one pick. DJI Action 1 or 3, if you feel like foregoing the 2, which you should never get. I think the 1 is, if you can get it super cheap, is good enough. 3 might be better, we'll see. Aiden Camera has reached out to me saying, do you want to te test the DJI Action 3? I'm like, yep. Too bad I'm not in Toronto, huh? Oh, that sucks. So we're still waiting. I could be back soon, you don't know. So we have a bunch of interesting stuff coming. GoPro 10 is where GoPro started to become reliable and not freeze. So the 10 or 11, or if you want to step up into a mirrorless life, Olympus OM5 on the way soon. I bet that'll be pretty decent. Or the EM53 with the 9 mil, or you get the Panasonic G95. The g 85 successor, but with slow-mo this time, Best stable in the business, tap and lock. You could do worse. This person rudely sent a direct message to my Instagram for some reason, the place I check once a month at most, just to delete everything I see there. Hey Casey, I want to benefit from your experience, want to start vlogging. So you want to start vlogging. He doesn't vlog. He doesn't know if he likes it. He doesn't know if he could take the criticism. But you want to spend lots of money, do you? 
want to buy a camera? Really confused because my budget's not really good? Of course, because you don't have an actual job, like my job, vlogging in a nice studio. Confusion, should I buy an action cam or just a point and shoot, point and shot? Vlog style will be outdoors, malls, shopping. Yeah, that sounds like fun. All right, here's the deal. Get the cheapest thing you can get, because nobody gives a shit. If you can make it, and you can like bring some joy to people's lives, they will forego your terrible quality. Just make sure the audio is good, and we're good. Go action cam, or use your phone, something, or point and shoot, I've done it. But not many point and shoots have an external mic jack. That's the problem. You could get away with a Canon S120. No mic jack though, so what are you gonna do? You can't get away with it. The real answer is obvious, the Sony X3000 if you can find one. They're in museums only now, but they're still the best option, and that makes me wanna cry. Another rude Instagram violation to my rights. Hey Casey, I wanna ask something about cameras. I have X-T4 and X-H2S, so you're, you're already overkill. You have way too much. What do you wanna get rid of? Better be your next question. I'm doing humanitarian aid activities in Africa. You can see on my profile. I did not see, I did not click. I'm thinking about switching to the Sony A1. Do you have any suggestions for me? Yeah, I do, a couple. To me, Fuji screams humanitarian Africanized content. You're in Africa, there's a dusty road, there's a baby, he has a cob of corn, the color science of the savanna, sunlight beaming off a giraffe in the background. You're gonna want Fuji for that, like you have everything you need and this is our problem with society. You're looking outside of your heart for the answers when everything is in your house and your mind. You're good to go. The X-H2S, it'll autofocus pretty good, I think. When it misses, it'll feel cinematic because something will be in focus in that African savanna. You're good, keep it. Why Sony? Like, what are you gonna do with that? You're gonna get robbed immediately. You know that. I mean, would the Sony have better autofocus and low light and image quality? Yes, but Fuji will have something special that your Africanized audience will appreciate. Yo VP, how's your Hero 10 holding up? Still happy with it? I was! Until Corzine rudely bought us the 11 and it's on its way to my house and I can't touch it. I want to touch it. I'm away from my city and there's so much happening at home. I got a lens for the Canon EOS R, they're in the same room talking to each other right now and I can't even see them have sex. So the 11 will be tested. We'll do the 11 versus the 10. How does DJI Action 1 compare to the 3? 11 versus the 3. We've got a lot of combos to come. So I don't, am I happy with the 10? I don't use it a ton just because I haven't figured out a way to attach it to my backpack clip with a tripod. That's the ideal scenario. We have boom, easy. Because like this, I could not do that either with but if I'm gonna bring something it better be a mirrorless DJI action one can clip on and it's easy to bring around and it's much smaller and lighter I'm not gaining a whole ton with the 10 so the 11 I don't know is that gonna be much better we'll see that wasn't your question am I happy with the 10 it is nice it doesn't freeze that's the best part it's decent good state I don't mind you. I would love to see you test Canon R6 with the RF 100 to 400. Keep dreaming. Are you sure it's not great? Could be okay. Yeah, you'll get good results with it. Who cares about results? I'm talking about like, do I throw up after every shot due to having no custom modes? How does it compare to the Fuji and Olympus? Obviously, can't compete with the Sony A7S III and 206, and of course, I could not. Here's the deal. Canon has not yet made a product that has ticked all the boxes 
lens or camera we saw the cripple hammer chart it's like you like some things and then devastating like there's always two or three deal breaking flaws with every item and lens like that 100 to 400 oh wow it's so light and cheap decent range terrible autofocus cheap image quality no 3d pop cheapness that hurts canon r6 perfect i would love to switch between 4k 60 and 1080p 120 probably look phenomenal can you not quickly that's menu dives try that in the winter broken thumbs so for me i think you have to get the 100 to 500 just because it autofocuses better it'll look nicer everything about it's just a little better all right last question here just moved near some mountains bought the sigma 150 to 600 for my sony well i'm sorry to hear that that you went against my advice and got a third party lens and now you can't do handheld video because you're like oh why isn't the stave working with the ibis did they not share that protocol with sigma well, that's too bad just like all these new tamron releases for fuji the 150 to 500 and people are like oh what a budget option good luck shooting video you dicks doesn't sync stave that's a big problem how does tamra not know this like they have in their description of that lens it's like vc control best stave ever do you know that you can't turn ibis off while your lens stave is doing its thing that's completely opposite of what the ibis is doing best stave ever no it doesn't work with the camera but if you just hold the lens and you look through it it's like super stable get a job bazooka not a telephoto guy maybe micro four thirds is the way for me 75 to 300 is that good equivalent aperture best long telephoto is that the best the 75 to 300 is not the best at anything this is like if all you could afford and carry is this then you would go for it it's amazing for what it is i'm honestly shocked sometimes it's like it's sharp it's good it's like a kit lens in its specs like 6.7 aperture that hurts but you can get some separation even at that it's not terrible but you have to ask yourself are you olympus or panasonic because you just said micro four thirds so if you're olympus okay you get this if you're panasonic you would go with the 100 to 300 mark ii probably better that has sync stave with panasonic bodies so you're looking g95 with that you could do it or this it's a budget piece of crap but yeah like once you start moving up the 100 to 400s on both systems suck in my opinion the olympus doesn't sync stave and the panasonic leica build quality is just so stiff and like it so if you're cheaping out hard you go yeah get this for the olympus or the 100 to 300 for Banny boy or get some dignity get the leica 50 to 200 or the 200 mil prime then the cinema's yours or olympus the 300 mil 24 pro i'm just saying not that you deserve either of those but you will buy them through my affiliate links Olympus has once again produced a masterpiece with the best non-hissing audio. It sounds so good. I love editing the two-minute files and then the audio for each of those clips separately in audition. That's been fun over the whole trip. It's been a real good time. So I'm going to leave. How you doing? Lots of fun stuff. When I get back home, there's so much to test. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going now. After you buy a Cameron Conspiracies t-shirt.